Hey everybody, Sean Holsinger here from HolsingersFlyShop.com bringing you a really cool streamer pattern this week. It's called the Small Scale Bait Fish and I'll go into it a little bit after the video on why it's called that. But for right now, I want to get into tying it because it takes a little bit to tie. So here you're going to see a picture of the fly, then the material list and how to tie it. Okay, here you see the small scale bait fish in the vise. Very cool looking deadly little pattern. Uh, it's gonna take a little bit of time to tie, so let's get into tying it. For a hook, we're using a Gamagatsu B10S Stinger. This one is a size six. I've tied them in size eights and tens, and they look great as smaller flies too. For a bead, as you see here, I'm using a slotted bead. And um, this is a four millimeter bead for this size six. I tied the four millimeter on the size eights too, and it works great. So gonna put that on there. And I like the slotted hook on here, it works well. Next thing we're gonna put on, oh, my thread was um, 12 watt black Semperfly Nano Silk. Next thing we're gonna put on is some lead wire. This is O2O lead wire. And I'm going to take two strands of it, and I want to get it tied in on the top of the fly here. Now, I want this, um, the slot in the bead, I want it to go down and be with the hook. Be on the same side as the hook point. So, I'm going to spin that around there, and then I'm going to wrap a couple wraps up there. Try to lock that so it doesn't spin around much. But I want these two strips of lead to be on the top side of the hook right now. And I'm going to wrap them back, and then I'm going to make some really nice tight wraps, and it's going to cut them off there, the length. See how I stopped a little bit short there, right above the hook point, pretty much. And then I'm going to come in with one more piece of lead, and I'm going to sit this on top of the other two. And I'm going to tie that down on top of the other two. And what this is going to do, tie this back. I want it to go a little bit further back than the last two, create a taper. Tie that down there. What that's going to do by putting it on the top, it's going to cause it to ride like this with the hook point up, which is what I want in the long run here. So get that all wrapped down there nice. And then we're going to put some dubbing on here to make a nice body on here. For the dubbing, I'm using some light olive SLF prism. Doesn't really matter what color you use here. A white would work great. Um, you know, some kind of pearl or something like that. Doesn't have to be prism, you can put regular dubbing on there. It's not gonna show up a whole, whole lot. I'm just trying to give it a little bit of contrast with this light olive. Just changing the body color here, not making it real thick. I'm bringing it up right in behind that bead. So wrap that up, get that right in behind that bead. And then we're going to, easiest way, well, next thing we're going to do is put on the uh, top of this, which is some black barred rabbit strips. This is gold variant, and I've used a bunch of different colors here to make some different ones. You'll see at the end a couple different color combinations. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this about an inch and a half long, and I want it to go about the body length behind my hook. So I'm going to look at that, see where that is, transfer that point, Oh, I also take and cut a little V in the back of it. It just makes it a little bit cleaner back there. So I'm going to see where I have that sitting. See it right there. I'm going to transfer that and I'm going to put that area right through my hook point in the middle of the rabbit strip. So pop my hook point through there. Then I'm going to pop it out of the vise. Pull it the rest of the way through. Slide it up around. Put it back in my vise. Now, if you have... A rotary vise like I do, invert your vise here and put it on the top. It's a little, lot easier. If not, put your, turn your hook over in your vise and get it around. It's a lot easier to do it tying it this way. So now I'm going to pull the fibers up over here towards the point and tie it in behind that bead right there. Trap those fibers down just like that. Try to get as much of that hair on the back as you can. And then we're going to trim this off. 
right behind that bead. Okay, now that I got that trimmed off, I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit. I'm gonna put the belly color on this. For the belly on this, I'm gonna use some hair wing pearl, hair wing material in pearl, and it's like ice dub or ripple ice dub. And uh, I'm just gonna pull out a clump here. I'm gonna pull out some strands of it and tease them back and forth so they're all going the same direction. So I get nice long strips of my hair wing material, as you see there. We're gonna tie that down on the belt bottom of this fly, which is on the top of my vise, but it's actually the bottom of the fly. Tie it down, oops, and then fold it back over itself. And this will make the belly of the fly. Now, you see this is way longer than the fly back here, so I'm just gonna take my fingers, and I'm just gonna pluck off the fibers, and I want the belly material here to get about the same length is the end of the leather on this strip. So that looks good, I like that. Now I'm gonna flip it back over and there you see you got a nice belly. Just a good looking fly so far. Next thing I'm gonna do is put a collar on this. For this I'm using some Brahma hen. You can see this is just a Brahma hen. You can use partridge, anything like that, any soft tackle. We're gonna tie that on on the collar. I'm gonna get about two wraps around with it here. This is just going to give, this is actually going to work like the pectoral fins on this fly. Just give it a little bit of extra bugginess to it. So like I said, it's going to wrap around about two times. And then I'm going to stroke these fibers backwards and tie that down. So get them tied down and then I'll tease all these fibers backwards as best as I can and get them tied into position where I want them. And then we're going to create the head on this fly. For the head, I'm going to use some, this is actually Comparadun um, deer hair natural. I'm just going to cut off a little clump of this about half the size of a pencil, put it in my hair stacker and get all the points straight. So I'm going to pull out all the under fluff out of it, put it in my hair stacker, get all my points straight, and I want to set this right on top. Now I want the tips of this to end right before that hook point, as you see right there. So I'm going to transfer it over to my other finger. Best way to do it is make one wrap around it and then pull it down right on top of that bead. And by using your Semperfly Nano Silk, you can get a little tough with this, and I'm just going to wrap through all those hair fibers there and it's going to lock it in place right on top where we want. Now I'm going to take all these butt sections here and tease them all together. And we're going to trim them off right above that bead. So I want to get real close down on that bead and trim them all off best I can. Just clean this up as good as I can. And then just finish this up. So make sure I got it good and tight there. That looks great. Make a wet finish and then we're gonna put some eyes on this guy. So tie this off. Oops. Got looped around my whip finisher there. Tie that off and now we're just going to put some eyes on. For eyes, I'm using some living eyes. This is wind um, from fish skulls. And to glue them on, oops, let's turn, sorry, I'm going to turn my slot straight up there. Okay, so to glue them on, I'm just using some thick uh, solar res. I like using the thick because it it's just nice, it doesn't bleed around, and it works great like a glue. So put one of those eyes right on the side like you see there, and then hit it with my light, make sure it's where I want it. A little bit around the bottom, a little too much, so hit it with the light, that's going to tack it in place. Then we're going to flip it over and put the other one on.
Put that other eye on. Make sure they line up nice. And glue it down. And then we'll come in and finish this off by covering the whole head with a thin layer of this thick. And it's just going to secure those eyes in place and make a nice little round head on this guy. I just like to make sure I get over top of those eyes to make sure they stay locked in place. And that will protect it and seal it and you'll be good. You won't lose those eyes while you're out fishing. And there you can see very cool looking fly that didn't take me too awful long to tie. A couple of butt section stragglers there. And uh, trim it all up. It looks great and it's a good fishy fly. Okay guys, I hope you like this pattern. I think it's going to crush fish here. Anyone with the uh, zonker strips like that gets lots of movement in the water, very active, and I catch a lot of fish on those style streamers. And the fact that I can tie this real small, I really, really like. I've been tying these on 8s and 10s to get a really small minnow bait fish kind of thing. And um, I love the look of it. Playing with some different colors. Here you're going to see a couple different colors of them here. Uh, check out this white one right here. I love this white one. I think it's going to crush steelhead. Uh, you know, just a nice shiner kind of pattern. It's going to crush the steelhead this fall. So play around with different colors. Match the hatch in your area. Match the minnow in your area, whatever. But um, very, very cool pattern. The reason why it's called the small scale bait fish is because it's actually meant to imitate the small scale yellow over in South Africa. It's a pattern from over in South Africa. And uh, really cool looking pattern, but so versatile and it's gonna work great here. So give it a try. Don't be afraid to look at other countries and other places to find different patterns. You know, spread your wealth out over the internet. Look around at different things and uh, look at things. When I looked at this pattern, I thought, man, that looks like any bait fish in our area. That little deer hair on it, it's gonna give it a little bit of that sculpin kind of look to it. Like, there's so much potential in this fly. Give it a try. You're going to catch fish on it. So if you need any of the materials or you'd like me to tie any of these for you, feel free to reach out to me by email if you have any questions at wholesingersflyshop at gmail.com. Be more than happy to answer any questions you might have. And uh, like always, guys, please head over to our website at wholesingersflyshop.com. Uh, you know, we're so thankful you've supported us for all these years and uh, liked our videos and subscribe. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, like and comment. The comments and stuff help us bump up in the analytics. So thanks for watching, guys. Until next week when I bring you another video, I'm Sean Holsinger.